we know that stress and anxiety and depression and all of those things impact your physical health. And as I said earlier, I think traditionally there's been this ridiculous disconnection between our minds and our bodies. And we know a lot more now. In fact, there's a study, there are many studies, but there's a study specifically looking at prostate cancer uh, by, by Dr. Burnham, a researcher. And what they found in this study is that they looked at prostate cancer cells from African-American patients and, they, and, and white patients. And when they treated these cells with stress hormones, they saw that the black patient's prostate cells would begin to upregulate the genes and the proteins that are known to make that cancer more resistant to therapy. And so it starts to look at the role of stress and stress hormones. And we know that there's increased stress among minority communities, among you know, rural, uh, I'm sorry, urban communities, those who are otherwise disenfranchised. So from your perspective, can you just share a little bit about the connection between you know, stress and physical illness and maybe how you approach that in the work that you do? So there are these various patterns. We all operate. We have a, a framework that we all operate from. And it's beneath the surface of our conscious awareness. And so our subconscious mind, our operating system is there. But that operating system comes from our conditioning. We're conditioned by our families, by our local communities, our societies. And so the various structures that are in place are facilitating our conditioning. And from our conditioning, we, um, uh, that our conditioning creates our perspective, the framework that we operate from, that's determined, that's gonna determine how we relate to our experiences. And how we relate to our experiences can be gracefully or it can be stressfully just to put in those two two those those two those two, 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 two different terms. And so that stress that is created based on how we're relating to our experiences has a historical perspective. And so we have to address those issues. We can address our familial issues that has a historical relationship and say that mm, maybe the relationship that my mother and father, or grandparents had towards their own health is not necessarily the best, the most optimal way to do that. Now they may have had those ways of relating to their experience based on their conditioning, based on the suffering that they may experience, the environmental conditions that, that, were, con um, that were conducive for that mental framework that they're operating from. And so the, um, we have to work towards transforming that. And the, again, the place where we have the most power is in ourselves. How can I change myself? I have to advocate for myself. And so how do we increase that? By increasing um, our education and learning about ourselves and learning about our mental models that we're using to relate to our experiences and transforming those mental models to reduce unnecessary stress and tension. Because when we're under unnecessary stress, we have our epinephrine, cortisol, these hormones that are increasing in our bodies that's gonna suppress our immune system, uh, it's gonna cause damage in our blood vessels, uh, organs are not gonna function optimally. And I think that we're gonna keep finding out more and more about this. Uh, it's interesting that you hear that about um, the uh, prostate, prostate cells in African-Americans. Why would that be the case? If you had generations of hypervigilance for historical reasons, cultural reasons, or social reasons, then of course, that's gonna get passed on from generation to generation, this sense of hypervigilance, this sense of excessive amount of stress hormones floating around in the bloodstream. It's gonna have a significant influence on how the, the body is capable of dealing with various illnesses, be it cancer, be it cardiovascular disease or, or any other uh, disease that's associated with, or practically all diseases are associated with stress these days. Um, and particularly with cancer, it's very interesting. Uh, that relationship, why are these cells dividing and rapidly producing in the way that they're doing? And how is that related to stress? I don't think it's no simple relationship there. You can't just say stress causes cancer. I don't, I'm not saying that at all. But there is a correlation, there is a relationship. And if we don't, the thing that we can tackle, we can't change our genes. But what we can do is change our relationship to our experience, 
transform that to reduce the amount of stress or suffering and maximize well-being. And that's the kind of work that I, I try to focus my attention on. And what comes out of that is, okay, I need to work on how I relate to my experience, but also how do I create fire, favorable conditions in my internal system, in my body, through the food that I eat, through the exercise that I do, through the literature that I expose myself to, uh, and et cetera.